All right, so today I'm talking about community perceptions of drive-in and drive-out and resident GP services in two towns in rural Victoria. Um, this is a qualitative study. So we all know that rural Australia has long struggled with the supply and retention of GPs. Um, in many small rural communities where health demands and resources are insufficient to sustain a resident GP or attempts to recruit a permanent GP have failed, um, alternative models of care have been developed and one of these is the fly in fly out or drive in drive out model where towns are serviced by non-resident GPs who drive in drive out or fly in fly out. Um, historically drive in or die dial FIFO GP service models have been politically unpopular due to, due to concerns about lack of continuity, poor understanding of local community issues and loss of social capital. However, there's variations of this model in place where GPs work in a FIFO dido capacity but have a continuous relationship with one town or community. This particular model has the potential to mitigate the loss of experienced rural doctors for reasons relating to the needs of spouses and children, as well as attract metropolitan doctors who may be interested in trying rural medicine. Um, it's a model that can provide GPs with the benefits of rural clinical work in addition to guaranteed time at home and opportunity to access um, professional development activities. And it's a model that has the potential to meet the needs of communities who have been unable to attract to resident doctors while addressing concerns relating to revolving door locums. Um, in this study we spoke, thanks, in this study we spoke with residents of two rural communities, one with a traditional cradle to grave resident GP and the other where GP services are provided by doctors commuting from the nearest regional town on an ongoing basis. And our aims were essentially to compare and contrast and then see what the implications would this, what, for what this would be for innovative um, solutions to rural health care or GP services in rural health care. Okay, thank you. So um, as I said, it's a it was a qualitative study. Key informants were selected from local community groups using um, online searches. Further interviews, interviewees were recruited by snowballing. Participants had to be permanent residents of more than 12 months and within the town borders. Um, Semi-structured interviews were conducted and thematic analysis and cross-case comparison. Um, next, thanks. So interviewees were asked about characteristics of GPs and GP services, use of existing services and reasons for these choices. So uh, same versus different GPs, local services versus um, services out of town. Um, they were also asked about the non-work role of GPs in the community, trying to tap in on that social capital aspect. Um, benefits of having a GP service in the community and preference for having a resident GP and a possible improvements to the existing services and barriers to making those changes. So next, thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly introduce the towns. Um, each of these towns had a population of approximately a thousand people um, and they were 45 minutes to an hour from their nearest regional centre. So Town A had the long-term resident GP services over the week, including after-hour services, which was triaged by the nurse. Next slide, thanks. Um, town B had, uh, was the drive-in, drive-out town with three permanent uh, Dido GPs. Again, clinic open weekdays with GPs working one to four sessions each. Um, emergency after-hour care was only available in the neighbouring town or regional centre. So firstly, I want to provide a brief summary of overall results and then I'll um, focus on differences identified in cross-case analysis. So characteristics of GPs that were considered important by the community were clinical acumen and skill, um, personal qualities and availability. So Sonia Seventy from Town B said, most important to me is that he cares or she cares. From the moment I walk in his door, I'm on his mind. Uh, next slide, thanks. So next, the characteristics of GP service that are con considered important. I don't think there's any surprises here particularly. So access, including good coverage um, for appointments, um, uh, sufficiently, uh, sufficient open hours and availability of home visits. So appeal, good customer service and professionalism, confidentiality and availability of on-site services, including x-ray and pathology. So reasons that patients gave for seeing the same GP were good relationships with their GP, um, compatible healthcare beliefs, including holistic and open-mindedness, 
Um, continuity. Again, Sonia 70 from Town B said, he gets to know you and I think it's important to just sort of only repeat yourself once. Whereas if you go to somebody else, they'll ask you why you're here and all the problems you've had and you sort of have to rehash it. So proximity was also another reason for seeing the same GP. Thanks. So reasons for patients seeing different GPs were um, choice being a big one. So there were a number of reasons why people chose to see different GPs. Um, being able to access a second opinion. So Gary, 63 from Town B, said you have some sort of choice that if you're not satisfied with a particular doctor, there is availability of a second opinion or change in, of doctors. Other reasons of choice were having the option of seeing a GP who had an interest or additional skills in an area specific to their health concerns, having the choice of seeing a doctor of their preferred gender, and having the option of seeing someone other than their regular GP when um, sensitive issues were, had arisen. Um, other reasons for GPs seeing different GPs other than their regular GP was lack of available appointments with their preferred GP or no medical need for continuity in those who didn't have any chronic health conditions. Next slide, thanks. So reasons for attending the local GP service were satisfaction with the service, um, convenience. So Barbara, 64, from Town B said, he's an okay doctor and he's local, so I go. Um, Barbara again said uh, regarding the use it or lose it mentality uh, was if you don't go you lose your doctor, if you lose your doctor you're going to lose your hospital and you lose your pharmacy and then families stop moving into town. Uh, loyalty was another reason given and uh, lack of other options and this was particularly um, for both towns because I had both poor public transport infrastructure and also reluctance from doctors in nearby towns to see residents from a different community so there were some uh, barriers to being able to travel to the next door down. This is particularly for Town B um, and their after hours service. Okay, next slide, thanks. Okay, so um, benefits of having a local GP service were perceived to be health and well-being. Um, economic advantages, which some of which we've touched in before with Barbara's earlier statement. Um, a sense of personal safety um, and community pride. So uh, Gary Town B said, property is cheap here, people ask certain questions. Is there a hospital? Are there doctors? If there is a doctor, it becomes a bonus and people move in, it makes the community stronger. Um, Amy 41 from Town A said, I think a community feels better knowing they have GP services there, even if they're not accessing them at the time. So next slide please. So again, tapping into social capital provided by GPs uh, in the community, so resident versus non-resident, um, and there was those for and against, and it was pretty much spread fairly evenly <coughs> across both. So uh, those four, there was uh, cited historical role as community leaders as a reason, um, as an important role, or non-work role of GPs. So Rhonda from Town A said, People look at them as leaders, and whether or not that's reasonable, I don't really know, but people do. Um, they're also said to add to the richness of the community in the sense that not everyone in rural towns has access to a um, university education, and that, that added some, some richness to the um, social structure. Uh, economic obligation was all, also brought up in terms of, well, they take money out of the community, they need to be here and putting it back in. So those again said they've got enough to do already. Um, so Gary from Town B said, I reckon they have enough on their plate without actually expecting them to do anything extra. But it would be nice if they could. I think it's appreciated but not expected. Others um, recognise the need for GPs to perhaps protect themselves. Um, obviously being in a small community, um, uh, it, it's important to be able to step away from that community as well. And um, a couple of people also mentioned that it was awkward from a patient perspective seeing their, their GP in social situations. Okay, so next. So this is a cross-case analysis and really what I want you to focus on here is the use of GP services out of town and the differences. So we're really looking at the bottom right. And what we see rising here is, is in the town with a resident GP, what people were really um, going out of town for was choice. Um, so choice and, and the other one was confidentiality. And I think that sort of speaks for itself. 
Alternatively, the residents for, from Town B, where they had the um, drive-in, drive-out doctors, what they were seeking is continuity. And a lot of that category was actually made up of people who had their GP visiting on a particular day, but then would go to the regional community to see them on a day where they weren't in town. So both choice and continuity were valid, but for different reasons in the different towns. Thanks. So the wish list for changes to existing GP services. So I think, um, again, most of these are fairly predictable. So greater availability and predictability of hours, um, decreased cost. And again, so in blue here, we've highlighted uh, town A. We're really seeking more choice in um, practitioners and town B improved continuity. Um, interestingly, sorry, interestingly, the barriers to change, they were perceived as um, doctors so Barbara 64 from town A said a small practice like this where you've only where you the only one obviously it's run to suit you and it's got good financial benefits and lifestyle benefits and everything so if you're looking at instigating some sort of change that can be a bit of a threat um, the other one was complacency that came up a lot which was Ron town B said uh, when you need them you need them and when you don't need them you don't think about them um, essentially so next slide thanks so where are we? Well, ultimately, there's no one-fits-all model for rural health services. Um, the model for each community needs to be able to respond to local needs um, and be achievable from a workforce perspective. So, and as part of this process, community, community participation is essential. So the permanent um, FIFO-DIDO option can be considered as a potential solution to GP workforce issues, issues in rural communities and actually may have some benefits um, over and above the traditional model in some aspects. Uh, the next step for research in this area is to determine whether more GPs will be prepared to work in this way and explore how this might be established and fun, uh, funded. Obviously following down the track, uh, we want evaluation of outcomes. Thank you.